the um, uh, first advance uh, in this area uh, came from thinking about uh, an alternative growth pathway. And so this is a pathway of growth that instead of relying on the environmental influx of, of new molecules, uh, occurs in a different way by competition uh, between uh, uh, protocells in a population. So some are going to grow at the expense of others. And this was work uh, done by Irene Chen when she was a student in my lab and initiated by discussions with Rich Roberts when he was a postdoc in the lab. So the basic idea was uh, that if you think of our basic uh, protocell model, we have genetic molecules trapped inside a semi-permeable membrane. Now, large polymers contribute very little to the overall internal osmotic pressure in a system like this. Most of the osmotic pressure actually results from uh, counter ions that have to be there to neutralize the charge on the polyanionic genetic molecule. And so this is the classical Donin effect. Uh, these ions contribute to an internal osmotic pressure. And we thought that as a result of this physical phenomenon, this physical effect, vesicles that had more RNA inside them should have a higher osmotic pressure, and maybe that could actually drive growth competitively. So um, the way that we looked at that experimentally was uh, using the same fluorescence assay that we had been using before to monitor uh, membrane growth following the addition of new membrane molecules. But in, in, in this case, the idea is that we're going to take osmotically swollen vesicles that have, for example, a lot of RNA inside, and we'll monitor the, the surface area uh, of those vesicles uh, following mixing with uh, vesicles that are osmotically relaxed. And we'll ask what happens to the surface area. Okay. So, uh, so here's the experiment where we're uh, monitoring the surface area of the swollen vesicles. These are vesicles that have a lot of RNA on the inside. Uh, and by themselves, they're perfectly stable. Nothing happens. Same thing for the relaxed vesicles. Nothing happens. As soon as you mix the swollen vesicles with relaxed vesicles, you can see that their surface area uh, starts to increase uh, over a period of minutes. And in control experiments where we mix with buffer or other swollen vesicles, there's very little change. Okay, so it seems like the swollen vesicles are growing by uh, absorbing molecules from their relaxed neighbors. We can, of course, do the converse experiment and monitor the surface area of the relaxed vesicles. And when they are mixed with swollen vesicles, their surface area declines. So molecules are leaving those vesicles and going into the swollen vesicles. Again, control experiments where relaxed vesicles are mixed with more relaxed vesicles, not much happens. Okay, so, uh, so what's going on here is that as soon as we mix these populations of vesicles, the swollen ones are growing, the relaxed ones are shrinking, and the reason that's happening is that this osmotic pressure creates uh, a tension in the membrane which is only relaxed by the incorporation of more molecules, which allows the surface area to increase. So the exciting implication of that physical process is that it's a potential link between uh, genome replication and faster membrane growth. So any process that results in faster replication of the genetic material uh, inside a vesicle will automatically as a result of the Donin effect, lead to faster growth of the membrane compartment. So it's a coupling between genome replication and cell growth as a whole. Now, uh, that could be particularly interesting if genome replication is an autocatalytic process driven by RNA-catalyzed RNA replication. So now, any mutation that leads to faster, more efficient replication of the genetic material will automatically go along with faster growth of the cell as a whole, and it's a competitive form of growth that results uh, from these cells essentially eating their neighbors. Okay, so that was a very exciting conceptual advance, um, but 
there was always this nagging problem that here we're looking at growth uh, driven by osmotic forces, uh, which means that these are uh, growing as spherical vesicles. And dividing a spherical vesicle, essentially one that's osmotically swollen, is something that's actually quite difficult to do. It takes a lot of energy, and as I said in the case of the extrusion experiments, results in loss of some of the contents, which is not very satisfying. So we were left uh, thinking for a long time about uh, possible alternative membranes and that uh, alter alternative uh, division processes. And that's something we'll come back to uh, later. Okay, so uh, let's think about uh, more gr uh, natural systems. Everything uh, that we've uh, looked at up till now has been a highly constrained um, a very artificial laboratory uh, system designed so that we can uh, follow what's happening analytically in 